Thank you again to everyone who took part in the September Power Query Challenge. This time it was duplicates alerts, so thanks to Tom, uh, Muneer, Seb, Melanie, Igor, Glynn, oh, Bowden, Dockner. Thank you everybody for taking part, and loads more as well. So thanks everyone for uh, submitting your solutions. A link to all those solutions um, will be in the show notes below in the description. Um, here's my solution. Let's go. So here's a quick reminder of what the, the challenge was. Um, I've got a list here of items and how many units of each I sold. And then a little lookup table saying, hey, A means apples and here's the cost per unit. B is bananas and here's the cost per unit. And, you know, I want to use a merge in Power Query, a bit like doing an X lookup or a V lookup or an index match, okay, but in Power Query, and then um, produce a combined table. So when I do right click refresh, it'll actually combine these two and push out a combined result. There we go. And you can see there's the names, and this total column adds up to 130, as does that one, which is all great. Okay, that's the cost per unit. Right. However, the issue with Power Query merges that don't come when you're doing an X lookup or a, a index match, or whatever, is that if you did have duplicate data, like two C's in here, okay, and I refresh this, right click refresh, what'll happen is that you'll get a double up. This now totals 171 because these C's doubled up for carrot and cake. This C doubled up. So the doubling up is a problem, all right? And if you do more of these, let's say I do A for avocado and another G here, you know, right click and refresh. If you have double ups, you get a problem. So you, what I'm, this challenge was about was creating a little alert. So what do I actually want to happen? Well, if there are double ups, okay, right click, refresh. I want to show this duplicate values. And if there aren't, I want it to work. So that's the challenge. Okay. Right. So here we go. I'm going to start with this little table and load these two tables. I got some duplicates in here to test this out. I'm going to load these two tables into Power Query using right click, get data from table slash range, and then saying close and load to connection only. So I'm going to whiz through that very quickly. Okay, so I've loaded those two tables as connection only, and now I'm just going to double click on one of them to go back into Power Query. So these are my two sort of starting tables. And I'm actually going to just reference one of them. This is the starting one. So right click, reference, and this will be called my output or my results table or whatever you want to call it, something sensible. So there's my starting point. And I'm just going to do a little merge with the lookup table using this item column. So I come up here, I say merge queries, click on this, and then bring in the lookup table, this column with this column. You get a nice green tick saying, hey, it matches, and you can click OK. Great. Okay. So there we go, we've got it merged in. Now, here comes the issue. If I expand this out, so I go expand, take off, use original column name as prefix. Don't really need the item because we've already got the item here. And I click OK. These all work, but check it out. Apple and avocado, it's doubled up. The A, the 10 has doubled up. The three has doubled up for apple and avocado because back in the lookup table, I've got apple means A and avocado means A. That is a problem. Okay, I don't want that. I want an alert. So let me delete this expanded step. And, you know, check this out. If I click in this little table, there's two rows here for A. And if I go to the row for B, okay, there's only one row for B. Okay, one row for B. 
So if I can count how many sort of items there are in this little table, I can say, hey, if there's more than one, you've got a problem and we need to do something about it. Okay, we need to spit out that little alert. So I just want to count how many rows there are in this table. Um, so I'm going to add a little custom column to say, hey, count how many rows there are here. And then I can just work out if there's any issue. Ideally, there'd be one row in every table and everything can work fine. So I'm going to go add column, custom column. Okay. And how do I count how many rows? Well, let's see if IntelliSense can help us. Is there a row count of anything? Well, there we go. Table row count. Beautiful. Click on that. Open the bracket. What do I want to refer to? Well, I want to refer to this column because that's the column with all the all the names in, all the tables in. So I can double click on this and close the bracket. Mm, let's see what that does. Click OK. There we go. We've got two rows in that table. That was the A's. We've only got one row in that table. Great. That's perfect. OK. So this column, I'll just rename it as um, number of matches. OK, so there's two matches. I only, you only really want one. So if that column has a certain number of matches, then, then you're in a bit of trouble. So, OK. Then I want to say, you can do this a couple of ways, I guess. I'll say, right, I'll pretend that it's working fine to start with. So I'll remove this column. Okay, and I really probably should turn this into a whole number. Okay, but I'm now going to remove this column and I'm going to come back to it later. All right, so before I do, before I come back to it later, I'm going to refer to this as this step, so it's easier to refer to as um, duplicates check. All right, so that's the the sort of checking point here. Okay, so I'm going to remove this column, remove, and I'm going to expand this out. And again, I don't need the item, I'm going to click OK. So name and cost. Okay, so if there weren't any duplicates, that is my answer, right? That is it. So I'm going to call this my um, result if all OK. That's my result if all okay. Okay, we just spit that out, happy days. But I wanna say, were there any duplicates? And if they were, what were they? And then sort of join them together with a little pipe symbol. So how do I check if there's duplicates? Well, I wanna refer back to this duplicate check and get the max of this column. So on the bottom step, I'm gonna go FX. And rather than referring to results if all K, I'm going to refer to duplicates check. So now I'm back to this column. And actually, I can just get that number of matches column just by using square brackets. OK. And then, look, if the number is greater than one, let me get the max. OK, so um, list. Sorry, list max. Again, never type the dot. Remember that little lesson. So list max, because that's a list now. Open the bracket, close the bracket on the end. Two. OK, so this is, um, OK, let's call it max count. I'm going to do FX and I'm going to refer back to the duplicates check again. Oops. All right, and I just want to filter this. So a number filter does not equal one. Okay, and then I just want to right click and reference this. And there's easier, there's quicker ways, but I quite like doing the, the sort of, you know, the, this way of doing stuff. Um, I just want to get the list so I can say remove other columns, for example. OK, so now I'm going to go and remove the duplicates. Right click, uh, remove duplicates. Then I want to combine these together. So 
easiest way is to turn this into a list and then use text.combine to do that, I think. Um, again, I say the easiest, it's the easiest way I know. So I could right click here and say drill down, which turns this into a list. And then I could wrap this in a text combine, open a bracket. See, it says text as list. So you need to pass this as a list, which we've just done because it's now a list by that drill down, comma, and use the little pipe symbol or whatever you want to join those items together. Okay, so this is your duplicates. And then I want to turn this into um, a little table where the word duplicates exist. So there is a, a thing called table from list. Okay, so table, there we go, from list open the bracket and then at the very end put a close bracket in. Now it says table from list so it needs a list so you have to do a curly bracket to start with all right and then the end of the list is going to be here after this bit so there's my curly brackets and I'm just going to put in the word duplicates exist any you know bit of text and then a comma so that's now a list and hopefully if I press enter at the end there we go, okay? So you've got a little list and you've turned it into a table, okay? I could have done this. I could have just got rid of table from list if I broke it into two parts for you, okay? There's the first bit, create a list, all right? So there's the little list and then turn that into a table, table.from. Yeah, table.from and then put the round bracket at the end. Oh, table from list, sorry. My bad. Okay. And then I actually want all the columns that existed at the um, results, if okay. I want those four columns. So this is where IntelliSense lets you down sometimes, because if I put a comma here, it says splitter is nullable function, and there's no mention of, you know, the column names. If I just put null as a, as a splitter, it then says columns as any. Okay, so you can use, grab the column names from that other sort of step. Table column names from the, uh, what was it called? Results, if all okay. Press enter. So there's your column names. Let me open up this formula so we can see that a bit better. So shift enter. So the table from list takes that little list shift enter again and shift enter again okay so that's the formula to do that a little bit weird a little bit tricky um but hopefully it makes sense all right there's nothing in these columns so this this change type step hasn't kicked in so let's just do it manually let's just say look this is text um you know this is whole number this will be text as well and this final one will be a whole number or whatever it might be, okay? And I'll just change this to alert. And all I need to do then is just have an if statement to say, hey, if the max count is greater than one, then give me an alert. Otherwise, give me the results if okay. So here we go, we click on the FX and we say, if uh, max count is greater than one, then alert else uh, results if all okay enter all right so this is the final output and we go home close and load close and load two and let's load it to a table in an existing worksheet just here click okay there we go we've got the alerts g doesn't show up because there is no g in this column as soon as I add a G, okay, and right click refresh, G will get added. But if I fix these up, so let's call it X, uh, Y, and Z, and right click and refresh, all done. Right, I hope you find it useful. Any new tips learned there, please leave me some comments. Again, thanks to everyone who took part. Uh, lots of different awesome solutions. Mine's not the right one. Mine is one of the ways of doing it. Okay, 
So I hope you find it useful. Let people know about the channel. Catch you later.